Welcome back to Cuenca, Ecuador. This is Warren with Travel With Us by Warren and Julie. Today is day 55 of our curfew quarantine life here in Cuenca, Ecuador. And on day 52, we decided to take the dogs out for the very first time to the park to give them a taste of fresh air. Gracie's out catching some vitamin D, some fresh air. First time out of the Airbnb. Say hi, Grace. Hi, everybody. Hello. Here we are in this beautiful Cuenca Park, and there's Gracie and Warren. This is pretty much what we dreamed of when we thought of Cuenca. So we've broken out of our jail today and taken the dogs out for their first uh, time other than to see the vet. This is May 8th, and under the current curfew restrictions, we can only be out between the hours of 5 a.m. to 2 p.m., and you should have a reason to go out, and that could be either to go to the market or for a uh, pharmacy or going to uh, see somebody for medical care. So what we've decided to do, since a lot of the markets we are going to are outdoor markets or on the street, and we're not going into the larger markets, that we would take our dogs with us on these trips to the market. So before we get the nasty grams of we should not have the dogs out, there's a lot of people that take their dogs out and do exactly what we're doing and are taking them to the markets or to take them through the park while they're going to the market. So giving the dogs a taste of freedom was very important. They were going a bit stir crazy being in the house for the last 50 plus days. In today's video, we want to show you what it was like here in the first week of May in Cuenca, Ecuador during the curfew. We'll be going to various shops, streets, different parts of Cuenca, Ecuador. The videos from today were actually accumulated over the previous week on multiple trips out to go shopping at the markets. If you're joining us for the first time, please give us a like, a subscribe. The purpose of our channel is to document Julie and I, as we travel the world, we recently retired and we're planning on spending six months in total in Ecuador. It looks like the first third will be pretty much in a curfew quarantine situation and maybe the, a month of it being loosened up. And we're hoping that at least half of our time, maybe we'll get to see the real Cuenca. But we're documenting our journey as we travel throughout the world. We'll be heading to Peru in September. But Cuenca, Ecuador is one of the most popular places on the planet for American expats. I should say North American expats. There's a lot of Canadians here as well. This is the land of perpetual spring. The weather is constant throughout the year. And there's a lot of great things about this area. And it's part of the reason we chose to come here to spend six months. As we travel the world, we'll be looking at the cost of living at various locations around the globe. We'll be interviewing immigration attorneys. We'll talk to real estate agents. We'll do the tourist things. We'll help out with animal causes and do some volunteer work. But what we want to do is give people a taste of what it's like to live someplace. Our typical duration of a stay will be a month or greater so that we can get a real feel of what it's like to be in the community and get to know some people and give a true cost analysis back to you about what to expect if you were to choose to move and relocate to another part of the planet. The current hand that we were dealt being in Quink Ecuador at the beginning of the epidemic and the shutting down of the borders and the curfews has quite changed the dynamics of what we intended our videos to consist of. Instead of doing the tourism stuff and going to speak to dentists and optometrists and doctors and attorneys, we are finding ourselves trying to be a news source for expats or people interested in what's going on in Ecuador. So for now we're kind of going off of our original ideas of what we're doing our videos on to try to give information about Ecuador and to many of the expats that are out there around the world waiting to come back to Ecuador that are trapped outside the country at the moment. Hopefully this will give you some peace of mind of what's happening here in your home area. I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert in, on Ecuador and all things Ecuador. 
Some of what I'm going to speak about might be my perceptions or my opinions. And all I can tell you is this is what I'm experiencing here in Cuenca. The current state of affairs regarding the coronavirus has 12,577 cases of the coronavirus in the Guayas province where Guayaquil is located. Cuenca is in the Izuay province with 561 cases that have been confirmed. Of those 561 cases, which represents 2.6% of the cases in Ecuador, 484 of those cases are actually located in Cuenca. So with a population of over 600,000 in the Azuay province and about 350,000 in Cuenca, our rates are relatively low in comparison to much of the United States and much of the world. It was reported on May 8th that in the Cuenca High Life online English news that the two main hospitals, IESS hospitals here in Cuenca, there are 28 ventilators between the two, and unfortunately only four of them are available. However, there are two hospitals that are private hospitals in the region that have added capacity, and all hospitals in the area are treating coronavirus patients but the main two IESS hospitals are where the majority of the cases are being treated currently, but there is additional capacity when you include the private hospitals in the area. The same news report in Cuenca High Life also stated that in Cuenca, there's a total of 16 patients that are admitted and currently in the hospitals being treated for the coronavirus. Okay, we're walking along a river here and one of us is breaking rules, one of us is a law-abiding citizen. One of us is breathing fresh air. One of us is breathing inhaled, exhaled air. Okay, I'm not turning her in. So Ecuador's president has requested that the 221 mayors here in Ecuador start to get together and to make a plan to work on restoring the economic vitality um, as quickly as possible for the country. President Moreno uh, also spoke that there's already a lot of businesses that are already operating clandestinely and also informally and stated that such activity is not fair to the businesses that are following the health emergency rules. And he's understanding that people and businesses are desperate to return to work, but this must be coordinated with plans to maintain public safety. In Cuenca, Ecuador, 55 major construction projects are to resume going back to work or reactivating next week. So as of May 10th, we're probably looking at some of these uh, construction projects around Cuenca to be reinstated and to start up again. When the construction workers go back to work, there will be safety precautions put in place and temperature, ch temperature checks will be conducted. And that should be putting close to 65,000 people that will be returning to work in the coming weeks as these construction projects start up again. Public transportation is apparently hurting here in Cuenca, Ecuador. Uh, according to the latest reports from Cuenca High Life, many of the bus owners in Cuenca say that they're days away from going bankrupt the suggestion is that when public transportation opens back up, that ridership has to stay at a 30% bus occupancy capacity. Uh, many of the bus owners say that that's not going to be able to be economically viable for them to sustain service. A daily occurrence that we see in Ecuador are dogs that are on the street. Some of these are strays, some of them are pets. They're Owners oftentimes will just let them out, and many of them do not have collars. They'll go out on the streets and return to their homes at night. We watch several dogs that go across the street to a home every evening, three dogs, where the owner opens up the yard and lets them into the dog house. So while we perceive that there's a lot of stray dogs in Ecuador and Cuenca, we really don't know what percentage of them are actually stray and how many of them actually have a home that they go back to and get fed in the evenings. Julie and I are dying to go to the local animal shelter and try to do some volunteer work and see what we can do to assist in the local needs for these animals. 
for those that are astray at least. You'll notice that there seems to be an increase in traffic on the roads here in Cuenca, even though there is a license plate restriction on days that cars can be out on the road. So Julie, what do you think this elevation? <laughs> the moment I'm catching my breath from that uh, climb up. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit of a climb, huh? Yeah. Okay. All right, ready? Let's find our pet store. Okay, we're off. I mentioned in previous videos that here in Cuenca, Ecuador, our elevation is between 8,000 to 8,500 feet. So to put this in context, we are dealing with about a 15% oxygen level here in Cuenca, Ecuador. Where Julie and I came from, we were sea level in Cape Canaveral, Florida at 21%. So 6% drop in the amount of oxygen, which is roughly 30% of the actual oxygen level that we were used to. Unfortunately, we don't get as much movement here as we would like to due to the curfews and quarantine. So our exercise level is quite far down from what it once was. And th this has also impeded us from getting acclimated fully to the altitude and the lower oxygen level. While it might seem as though we're very active in our videos, many of these videos are shot over several days of trips to the market where maybe we're getting 4,000, 5,000, 6,000 steps in a day, and some days we might only get 2,000 within our Airbnb. So we're not as active as what the video might give the perception as. Being new to Cuenca, we're not sure what the traffic actually normally would look like, but here in the downtown area, there seems to be quite a bit of traffic. It's at a standstill. No, those cars are not parked. They're waiting to move along, so traffic is quite, quite tight here. We come here probably once a week to go to the nut market. Julie's found a place where she can get her coconut oil, some dehydrated fruits, different nuts. We make nut milk. If you've seen our video, we made oat milk before, but she's been making walnut milk lately, which has actually been pretty good, and it's got a very thick consistency. While we were out, we stopped at one of the restaurants that were open for either delivery or to go, and we were able to come in here and get an empanada, um, vegetarian style. It was very, very good. Uh, Julie actually said it was the best empanada that she has ever had. Um, we'll probably come back to this little place in the future when we walk back to Cuenca. It would be nice to be able to sit down and uh, enjoy the atmosphere and look out at the scenery. But for right now, we just have to grab our food to go. We spent a total of $4 um, buying two empanadas and two bottles of water that we took back to our Airbnb to have for lunch. This is Mercado Ten de Agosto, one of the larger Mercados um, in the area. It doesn't look too crowded from the outside here. We didn't go in on this particular day. Uh, some of the Mercados have been getting probably a little bit less patronage as of late. There have been some coronavirus uh, scares that have come out of some of the Mercado areas. One of the uh, Mercados in the Cuenca area had a testing of vendors and they found a uh, approximately 30% of those tested came out with showing positive signs of the coronavirus. Um, we'll be glad to go back there again. Right now, from what we understand, there's a limited amount of vendors that are open and there's spacing between them. And uh, We'll go back in after this is all done and really try to have a new experience with a Mercado that's fully functioning and, and with all the vendors operating. We're currently limited on what we can do, where we can go. We can't wait to get out to do some of the tourist stuff, go to some of the restaurants, do some volunteer work, and really give you a different picture. Right now we are very much handcuffed on what we can do, where we can go. So we're limited on what we can come back and report on. But what we do want to show is that Cuenca is safe. There's not a lot of uh, commotion going on here. There's been press in the past that uh, has been somewhat negative regarding Ecuador, especially in the U.S. The situation here in Cuenca is very, very stable. And 
if you are looking to come here and live here, um, I think you could very much enjoy coming and living in Ecuador. Just keep watching us. Keep it. Keep tuned in. We'll eventually get out and go do some of the things out in the town and show you some other parts of this. But at this point, we just want to make sure that we're putting at ease any fears that people may have that are expats outside the area that are desiring to come back or wondering what's going on here in the area. Or if you're in Ecuador and you're not getting out much or seeing much, you know, maybe our perspective and what we're seeing is something different than what you're seeing and will help to give you some comfort as well. But anyhow, again, we're all in this together. We're, we just really want to show you what we're experiencing and we think we could really like our time here in Ecuador. Again, we're just not getting to experience the true, true Cuenca and hopefully things will turn around soon and the economy will get kicked back into gear if you can, please give us a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and follow us. Hoping that our future videos will become more entertaining as we can actually get out and do some fun things. We're hoping that come May 17th, we'll have some new opportunities to get out and do some things and explore some new areas. But for right now, this is the Ecuador that we can see. This is the Ecuador that we can experience. And we're hoping that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have any requests, please you know, leave us a comment if you want us to see something or get out to explore an area. Once we get our freedom, we'll try to get out and go different places and report back and, ex and give you our, our perceptions of our experiences. Anyway, everybody, please stay safe. And wherever you are in the world, there's probably a good chance you're going through similar experiences as what Julie and I are experiencing here in Cuenca, Ecuador. Once again, everybody stay safe and join us next time. Thanks.